friends, Jen Cassell here. I'm back with another design team project for Scrap Diva Designs. Uh, this time we are playing with the candy bar wrapper box, one of my old favorites. Uh, this I created for Patty Swap. I am, guys, I'm participating in a swap. I haven't done this in so long, but her spring fling swap is happening and it's one of my favorite swaps. I love participating in it because it's all about the flowers, guys. So real quick, here is her website and of course her info on the back. Make sure to use that hashtag Scrap Diva Designs for some amazing inspiration. If you are inspired by this, please head on over to the shop and you can use discount code GEN10 for 10% off your purchase. I really appreciate it. I do get a small kickback from that and it helps me continue doing the crafts that I love to do. So thank you so much, you guys. So let's get into the swap. So swap requirements were to send 12 flowers. Um, you had to have a cute small packaging because it all has to fit into a 9 by 12 uh, bag. And then you also had to have a tag or something to identify yourself with. So I went with this cute little candy bar box. This is one of my favorite dies. This is a must have. I think this is probably the third or the fourth time that I've redone this box. I absolutely love it. I love the size. It's really cute. And the die is super easy to put together. Um, if you are looking for a tutorial on it, I do have one on my channel and I will link it in the description box. So for this one, uh, I did that fun bow that I absolutely love from the heart, uh, mini album that came out in February. I topped it with this fun little roller skate. I did some leaves in the back. I really just brought everything out to make it like super dimensional. And then on the bottom, you're going to see the jam jars that came out last month. And then I just did up some florals on the bottom. And then uh, this is some of the ephemera. I use the Blooming Wild ephemera for the bee. I thought it went really, really well with the Poppy and Pear collection that I used for the rest of it. And if you flip it over... Uh, I did do a handmade tag for it, and I just did the spring fling swap, uh, my name, and of course, Jen Cassell on IG and YouTube. So I love how this turned out. I thought it turned out super, super fun. I have all of my flowers in this one and this one, and I figured I'd save the last one and we could pack it together. I am going to be including a flower tutorial at the end of this. I used a whole bunch of different flower dyes to create my 12 flowers. These are the flowers that I have for inside this one. This one is fringe. This is the fringe flower. This is that large sakura, the smaller sakura flower. And I did some uh, stamens in the center. Uh, this is her mini rose dye. And then I also did, this is the edge dye here. And then I am including a couple of leaves. I have some of those smaller Sakura flowers in there. Uh, I just kind of decided to do a variety and they all kind of go with this poppy and pear collection, but they'll work for a lot of different collections. So, um, I mean, who doesn't love the pinks and the blues and the yellows and mints? Super pretty. They are going inside on just a piece of acetate. Now, this is barely art acetate. If you're using barely art acetate, remember that there is a film on both sides to protect it. If you haven't used barely art acetate, I highly suggest it. It does not have a whole lot of glare to it. It's a pretty cool acetate. I mean, I'm, I'm wiggling this around quite a bit and there isn't a whole lot of glare to it. So, I do have a coupon code for that too. You can use my coupon code Jen Cassell, uh, to save at Barely Art. Highly suggest you run over and grab this. Best acetate on the market. So all I am going to do is just kind of lay my flowers out on the acetate just to see where I'm going to put them. And I'm going to start with my two largest flowers. I know that I have to have six columns here. So I want to kind of space everything out. I went a little heavy on the pinks for this one. So I want to make sure that they're like 
not right next to one another. There we go, perfect. That is how I want them on there. So to attach them, I, th I think I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue for this. I'm just gonna add the smallest amount of hot glue just to give it a little grip onto the acetate. So it should be really easy to pull off for the recipient of my swap. Okay, now that I have all of my flowers hot glued down to my acetate, I'm just gonna add in a little leaf here just to add a little filler to it. I'll do that one like right in here. And then probably this one in here. See, they come right off, so I'm glad for that. I was hoping that it wouldn't be a super sticky mess. Okay, perfect. All right. And I did magnetize this. And I did forget to mention, um, if you notice that there is kind of like a little bit of a glossy sheen to it, I did a different paper than what I normally use. Uh, normally, I use Koala... Uh, double-sided matte cardstock and Koala had sent me some of their glossy photo paper so I used that on this and I love how it turned out um, I know the camera probably isn't picking it up but it it does like it just feels different because it is a glossy paper and in person it just has kind of a nice sheen to it. It's really cool. And I tried to like when I I was thoughtful about when I cut my dies and how I was going to layer them. Uh I definitely wanted to use more of a matte cardstock on this with the glossy paper underneath it, like the glossy print, because it just added, like, I don't know, it's it's hard to describe, but it really just kind of added some contrast to it. It's, it's really cool. I love how this turned out. You know, it almost has, like, the same finish as any of our, like, gold uh, paper. It, it's cool. It's, it's really cool. Highly suggest you, if you're digital like I am, check out that Koala photo paper. It's, it's awesome. So now that I have all of these together, I am going to finish with a little tutorial. Um, I do all of my flowers about the same way, so it doesn't really matter what dye you're using. I'm essentially just staggering the petals so that they're not right on top of one another, and I'm using the same technique regardless of what dye I'm using. So I am going to show you how I put my my stamens into the flowers as well as um, the the foam ball center that I do if you're just you know if you have the foam balls on hand they look cool too so if you're interested in seeing and sticking around for the tutorial stay tuned so here you're going to see the edge flower that I've cut in pink as well as the blue is the fringe flower. I have it sitting on top of some one inch foam. I just use scrap foam. I don't go crazy. This is actually packing foam that I found in one of the boxes at my office. So I've already spritzed it with a bit of water. You don't want to use too much water. You just want to slightly cover the paper. So I do a couple squirts of water with a mini mister and you can get that from Ranger. I then start going around with a large stylus. I like a metal ball stylus for this and you're going to want to make sure that those flowers are flipped over to the opposite side of what you want showing. As we're rounding it, make sure you're hitting the individual petals like I am here, and that's going to help even cup it further. Now I'm going to set those aside to dry a bit and start working on the flowers that I had already started cupping. So you're going to see me flip these over so that the side that you want showing is up. It's okay that you're starting to take away that cupping that we worked on, we're actually going to go in with a smaller stylus and press down on the center and that's going to flip those petals upward and give you a lot of dimension on your flower. 
So now you're gonna see me start to put the flowers together. I use hot glue for this. Make sure that when you're putting them on top of one another, the petals are variegated so that they're not sitting right on top of one another. You're going to see that I'm kind of pressing those flowers into the foam to really get that cup shape going. Now I'm going to start my stamens. I have about five stamens. It's really up to you how many you want to use. And now I'm going to take a little piece of wire that I have folded in half. Place the stamens inside the wire, flip it over, and you're going to use that wire to poke through the center of the flower. I like to use a heavy duty pokey tool for this. The Tim Holtz one works really well, but you're going to want to make sure that your hole is big enough that you don't have to force those stamens through at the bottom. You don't want your paper to tear. Insert the stamens with the wire facing down and then just pull those stamens through the flower. You may want to have a pair of pliers handy to help pull those stamens through. Once you have the stamens at the height that you like, you can go ahead and use a pair of scissors to cut the stamens flush with the bottom of the flower. Next, I'm just going to add a little hot glue on top of the stamen and press it down onto a silicone pad. That'll help it dry flat so those stamens don't pop out. I'm going to show you one more time how I do these stamens. Once again, I'm popping a hole into the center of the flower. Once again, I'm going to show you how I do those stamens. I've got about five or six here and I'm folding them in half and I'm placing the wire through the center. I'm pulling up and then I'm inserting the wire into the top of the flower through the hole that you would just poke through. And then I'm going to use my pliers to really grasp that wire and finish pulling the stamens through. Now I'm going to adjust the height of the stamen and then grab my scissors and cut it flush with the bottom of the flower. Once again, add some hot glue, and I like to place mine on silicone. It won't stick to it, and it'll help it dry fast. Now I am going to grab my blue fringe flowers. Once again, we've already cupped those, and I'm gonna use my stylus on the side of the flower that I want showing, and I'm gonna push down those centers. The harder you push, the more cupped your flower is going to be. I'm going to add some dimension to the flower by layering them up with a little bit of hot glue. And once again, I'm going to use that pokey tool to make sure that I can fit my stamens in. Using the fringe flower, I'm going to insert my stamens. Once again, I've grabbed about six. I'm adjusting through the center and cutting it flush. So thank you so much for watching and thank you, Patty, for hosting such a fun swap. I look forward to this every year. I can't wait to see what everybody created for it. And if I've inspired you, head on over to Scrap Diva Design. She has some amazing designs in the shop. Once again, I use the jam jar. I have the chocolate box. I have the bow from the heart mini album and the sakura flower the large sakura flower from the flower pot die and the rose as well as the fringe and edge dies in this. So you have a lot to choose from. I will link it all in the description box below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more crafty content. I'll see you in the next crafty video. Bye.